In celebration of National Red Wine Day, which is May 18th, I'm doing a rattle can red wine restoration of this Hot Wheels whipped creamer casting. It's in a little bit uh, rough shape there if you take a look at it. Fortunately, the glass, I'm surprised it's in pretty good shape, but otherwise this thing's beat to hell. The caps are missing from the wheels, the turbine's missing from inside the little whipped creamer section there in the back, the engine compartment. But I thought I'd give this a try. So when I went to drill it out, you may notice the glass is already out of this because the casting was loose in the back and I was able to just slide the glass out even before drilling it. And I only needed to drill the front because that back, that back post was broken. You see it's there still stuck in the base. It had broken off from the top half of the casting. Fortunately, the design of this thing, if you look, you see there, there's enough meat on that back portion, even without the post, that I can drill into it and tap it. So I didn't need to do anything creative <laughs> to try and recreate a post. But as I'm going through this, let me mention that this casting came out in 1970. You notice this has the blue tinted glass that identifies it as a Hong Kong version and the casting did not reappear until 1994 when a retooled version appeared and remained in production through 2010. Now that back little turbine portion is best referred to by the ultimate redline guide which in their description of this casting they say the Mattel designed concept car features a long sliding plastic canopy that covers the passenger and engine compartments. The engine compartment houses an orange plastic turbine engine. I'm missing that. And there are openings at the back end of the car that you can blow into to spin the turbine. That's important to me. I want to make sure that turbine spins. Now, because that front post is not so small, I used the 172 screw, but I was able, because that back half still had a lot of meat in it and I needed to get a good grab on it because the post was missing, I used a 256 screw back there. So yes, there are two different size screws. I cleaned up the casting with the file after getting it out of the paint stripper and then I wet sanded it down after that. That's with uh, it's 3000 grit sandpaper that's mounted to foam. And that seems to work really well when I'm wet sanding stuff like this. After that, I polished it with flits and a Dremel tool. <laughs> um, there I am just cleaning out some of the flits. And then I hit it with testers extreme lacquer purplelicious. And then with testers clear gloss lacquer. So while that's off in paint and getting finished up, I turned my uh, direction to the base, which as you can see, was pretty beat up. Similarly with, as with the top half of the casting, I went out, hit this with the Dremel tool, polished the heck out of it with flits. This bottom half there, I'm just cleaning out some of the excess polish that gets in that bottom section under the engine. And once that was finished with the flits and I got all the flits out, then I went over it with the Renaissance wax to seal it in. And it's always surprising to me how well the Renaissance wax cleans up. Even, even when you think you have all the polish off of it from the flits, it still cleans it up even better. And then you leave a thin coating of this Renaissance wax on it to protect it. And then there's that separate little engine section that attaches to the interior. I thought I was going to be able to get away with polishing this just by hand. Stupidly, I thought that. But then I hit it with the Dremel tool and got it looking really nice. The flits worked very well on that. And then it was time for gauzy, gauzy, gauzy. I did polish up that plastic glass with 
uh, Flitz polish again. I could only hold a really small section of the glass and I, I kind of knew that was going to happen. It was going to get away from me. It, so much of that glass, there's so little that holds it in place. It's almost all visible glass. There's just those two little tiny tabs that hold it. So after dropping it in there, I had to re-grab one of those little tiny side posts and do it again and then wick it dry and then set it aside to uh, dry off. But it, the glass turned out pretty well. I didn't want to sand it or anything like that. It was good enough that it didn't need that kind of attention. The gauzy always makes it look better. And uh, I, I was really amazed at what good condition it was in given that it's, you know, 50 years old. So that's it. I just need to pop the caps on the wheels. Doesn't get any easier than that. You may notice I did paint in the black areas at the front and the back of the base of the casting as on the original. I didn't do anything special to the seat area of the interior other than wash it off. And then there at the bottom, you see that orange turban insert for the engine that I guess is the portion that whips up the whipped cream. <laughs> that portion of the turban, I ended up getting that replacement from Second Chance Red Lines. And you see it just drops in there. There's actually a little section on the underside of the glass that goes up against that turban. The very top center of that turban. So there you basically have it, the way it goes together. Again, I did use the beefier 256 screw on the back because it had to reach in farther. There's some dead air space, in other words, because the, there isn't a post going all the way up to the base of the casting. That portion of the post is gone. And then I did use the smaller screw on the front, just because that, that front post is ridiculously small, as they are on virtually all of the original red lines. I'm really happy with the purplicious paint. <laughs> I, I really like the color. And then I wanted to make sure that turban would spin. And sure enough, yep, it'll spin. I thought about shooting air into the back of it, compressed air, so you could see it spin. And I thought, now that's getting ridiculous. But uh, there you see it. And man, this thing rolls so well, it's not even funny. You barely touch it and it takes off on you. You'll see it here in a second that I barely do it and there it goes. So again, there's where it started. And in a moment you're here, you'll see where it finished up. Happy National Red Line Day to everyone. I hope you like this build. It was a lot of fun, and I, I think it looks a lot better. I hope you agree. And uh, be sure and check out all of the other people doing this event. There should be quite a few people participating, and we will have a recap of the participants that, on, that have YouTube channel videos at the Three Blind Mice Diecast channel. So uh, everybody, thanks for watching this video. Happy National Red Line Day. And uh, it also happens to be uh, our anniversary. So to my wife, happy anniversary, baby. I love you. And uh, everybody stay safe and healthy out there. And uh, catch you in the next one.